Hi, just another follow-up video on this uh, failed Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 here and how the Ethernet chippy, this Broadcom jobby down here, looks like it's failed and it's getting red hot. Ernie Bernie. Um, now, a few people asked, uh, uh, does it actually do the same thing outside of the carrier board, which I had it on this little uh, carrier board here? And the answer is yes, it does. And I can show you that right here. So I've got it on the, um, this is the AERL uh, gateway that it came out of, uh, that it failed. This is for my solar battery if you haven't seen it. So let's actually plug this sucker in and you can see it's, oh hello, there you go, it's drawing eight and a half watts and my fingers on the ethernet chip. Yep, 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 yep. Ernie, Ernie, Bernie, Ernie, Bernie. Um, yeah, that ethernet chip is just mega hot and the processor I can leave my finger on the processor and it's okay. So yes, Hot, hot. <laughs> so let me disconnect that. Okay, so the answer is yes, it does get hot. There's no way. Um, if you look at the spec sheet for this thing, they actually boast. This is low power. It's uh, like one watt maximum for one port. And this is a one port chip, I think. Um, so yeah, at, at most, full speed, going like the clappers, it should be uh, drawing less than a watt or a watt maximum. So um, yeah, there's something wrong. And I've got another gateway uh, identical to this and it draws two and a half watts. Um, so yeah, <laughs> eight watts is definitely wrong. Okay, so uh, yes, that is a problem. So what I thought I'd do is let's, Get this thing out. God, I hate these. They're really, I you always think you're going to damage the damn things um, with these little delicate, delicate connectors on them. So anyway, uh, there we have it. There is our compute module. And that, that's the bottom of it. Nothing doing there. And on the top side, oh, it's upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out. Uh, there is our Broadcom chipset for those playing along at home. You haven't seen the first one. It is a Broadcom BCM5421 there. So there we go. Um, so what I thought I'd do, uh, a couple of people suggested this and I thought I'd probably do it last time. And I thought, yeah, it's um, just for shits and giggles. Um, I'm going to desolder that thing and um, see if the power draw goes back to normal and then see if we actually get, uh, see if this thing still boots and we get a HDMI output. Cause like, like I, I have actually tried it. Like, like I have actually connected a HDMI onto here when it's drawn the seven watts and five watts, six watts or whatever it was doing before. And I get no HDMI output from it. Um, and that was the problem. So let's see if we can get some hot air on that. Desolder, I mean, the board's gone. I mean, it's it's obviously failed. There's obviously faulty. There's something wrong with the silicon in there. Like it's it's not a bypass cap around. Is that a little bypass cap there? Right, it's, it's not that. Um, something, there's the uh, crystal for it on the bottom, 25 megahertz there, right? It, it is not these caps that are getting hot. In fact, I can, oh no, I can't power it up because to power it up, you've got to power it up through these bottom connectors and then all of these components are gone, like you can't access them anymore. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's not that. The chip is getting directly hot. So it should not do that. So it has failed. So this compute module is dead ski, but I don't know, there's a small chance that, you know, this could be loading down the DC power supply over here, which is trying to, you know, which gets red hot as well. It actually gets hotter than this because it wasn't designed to draw like, you know, the five watts or whatever into that poor little um, ethernet chip. So that could be dragging that down, which could be stopping the processor from booting. So it's quite possible that if we remove that, we'll get no ethernet functionality, but we might actually uh, restore this, um, to being used. I mean, it, it does actually have the uh, Wi-Fi module, but this unit doesn't have the, uh, doesn't use the Wi-Fi. It actually uses the ethernet connection. So I don't think that's gonna um, solve my problem with the uh, uh, gateway here, but anyway. Okay, so let's see if we can desolder this. Get some flux on there. That should help out. Sorry if this is blocking the view. I tried to use my nozzle that's not blocking anything. No, it's not liking that. Rather tough. Don't have to put a preheater on the bottom. Wow, that's nuts. All right, let's try a bigger tip. Bigger tip, slightly higher temperature and bigger airflow. Let's see what we get. Come on, you can do it. Wow, gonna try it on its side. Oh, there we go, got him. That's the trick. Yeah, big thermal pad on the bottom of that. 
Yeah, there it is. That's why that, that sucker took a bit of work there and the, uh, the bypass caps come off. Now, it looks a bit ugly, but that's just the uh, flux. Now, it doesn't look like... Yeah, we haven't lifted any pads and we can just go around with some solder. We can just lift that up. You can see a bit of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle there on the trace. That's uh, just some uh, length matching with the trace next to it, because that, that's obviously a differential pair. And there is that little pesky thermal pad on the bottom. So it took a bit of extra work. That was going right through to the ground plane in the middle. There's probably a whole bunch of vias on there, is there? They're all, uh, well, no, no, just around the outside. But yeah, there's probably a whole bunch in the middle there. Can you see them? Yep, yep, a whole bunch of thermal vias. And uh, they're going right through to the inner ground plane. Um, and I assume that's electrically connected to ground. I haven't checked the data sheet. I think it's NDA, actually, the data sheet. Anyway, little pesky QFN package there. Really, with a big therm, big ass thermal pad, really annoying. I mean, it, it does dissipate, even though it's low power, it does dissipate a watt, so, you know, which is significant, and they want to get rid of that. So, yeah, that was just a little bit annoying. Nothing else near it uh, came off. No, none of those resistors, they're still in place. And that little uh, eight pin jobby over there, it's all fine. That little SOP23 is just fine. That bypass, uh, no, that's not, probably not a bypass cap. That's probably some sort of set resistor or something like that. I don't know, some mode select or something like that, which we don't care about because the chip's not there anymore. And all that heat in, did that take anything off the bottom? No, nothing fell off the bottom. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> it was stopped by all that ground plane in there. And that is cleaned up a bit better. Not absolutely perfect there, but uh, good enough for Australia. And you can see, like, there's no shorts on any of those pins, because we care about that. We don't, oh, what is that? Oh, what is that black thing down there? No, no, that's just some crud. More crud down here. No, nothing burger, but uh, that came off very, very nicely. Very happy with that. Put some more isopropyl on that. Give her another scrub. Not on here. Tongue at the right angle. All right, so that's hunky-dory. Let's, uh, Let's take that out of there and we'll power it back up. Put it back into this board so that we can get a HDMI output from it, hopefully. And I do, even though I haven't tested this, I do actually have an HDMI uh, connect output uh, connected. I will have in a second. Connected into my Blackmagic ATEM switcher. And I can pull that up on channel 5 here. So nothing at the moment, but... Uh, Let's power it up. So that's seated in the connector properly. Let's power it up. See what we get. Oh, 4.6 watts. It's less. Right. <laughs> it's less. Okay. So obviously that's not going to get hot anymore, which is um, wonderful. Um, yeah, the power supply is a bit Ernie Bernie. Uh, let me see if I get anything. No, no, I'm getting nothing on the HDMI nothing out so no i think that's a uh, that's a loser all around um you know we, we could have like damaged our power supply or something still delivering 5.1 i guess we could measure on there and measure some power rails maybe but yeah that's it that's just too high but you saw it before like we were getting what to six or something six and a half and then we put on the other one seven but let's go for the measurement we did in the first video uh we were getting like Six, so there was a good couple of watts going into that chip. That's why it was getting hot. That's more than it's stayed double. More than double, maybe even triple its stated um, consumption. The process is doing something. The process is getting... That's, you know, it's, it's 40 degrees. Yeah, yeah, it's about 40. My finger's starting to act as a heatsink now. Not getting anything out of that, though, unfortunately. zippity doo -da. Let's measure... This power supply, I don't know the pin out of this at all, so I'm just guessing. But if you measure across the caps, you should get something. Nothing. Nothing across the cap. Point 0.2? Negative point 0.2, could have it back to front. Zero. All right. No, I think the, uh, yeah, the power supply's gone. Not surprising, um, th because... The overload on the Ethernet chip, uh, which is a definite known fault, could have caused um, an issue with the DC to DC converter. So, so that's why she's Kamigatsa. 
Although if we're getting no voltage out of it, why uh, why is our processor getting warm ski? Because that uh, that's getting reasonably reasonably hot now. Not quite as hot as the Ethernet chip, but still annoyingly hot. Sorry you can't see it. I'm just using the zoomed into probe here, but we we are getting we're getting five volts on those caps there. So we're getting our five volt input, but we're getting uh, zippity doo dah on the output. What what was getting hot there? Oh. Oh, that Wi-Fi module! That Wi-Fi module! Ernie Bernie! Ernie Bernie! Um, what? Oh, yeah, this is one... One very sick puppy. Aha! Hang on! Come on, come back! I swear this was jumping around like a jackrabbit! Just like I tried to tell you about in the first... Video? Come on! Yeah, look! Look! Look, look, it's jumping like it's it's shorting out the it's shorting out the thing. It's sh yeah, and there's an overload on my battery pack. Oh yeah, yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> this is one sick puppy. So there you go. Unfortunately, um, answer to that question uh, by removing that Broadcom chip. No, we didn't fix it. No, this is one sick puppy. It's gone. Has something gone drastically wrong? Maybe the DC to DC converter failed because I, I assume it's like three or five volts in to 3.3. Um, I don't know. Haven't got a schematic for the. Um, do they ever release a schematic for it? Anyway, I or oh, some people have reverse engineered it or something like that. I think it's supposed to be a 3.3 volt output, is it? So now the Wi Fi module is. <laughs> getting hot um i think yeah maybe it failed internally and wasn't regulating at 3.3 volts or whatever lower voltage it is and it and it five volts out on that rail and fried everything maybe that can be my only conclusion why seemingly everything on this board is now getting ernie bernie um yeah anyway so much for that <laughs> catch you next time Oh, update! I was uh, just about to edit uh, this video. I thought I was done. I read the comments from the previous one. Thank you very much, Joa5721 or 57 uh, something. Put up his comment. Um, noticed in the video that there was maybe a little blowhole in the Broadcom chip. And sure, like here's a photo from like screenshot from the previous video. I noticed it in a couple of seconds of the clip. Thank you very much, um, Joa for pointing this out and sure enough look look at that it looks like a little blowhole <laughs> is that where the magic smokes escaped let's get some isopropyl on that and i can give that a scrub there it's still there it's still there look at that yeah that is a divot i'll get my Get my sharp probe here. Yeah, I, I can feel, this is not feel a vision, but trust me, I can feel that. I can feel that. That is a blowhole. And that was there before, that's not due to the desoldering. That was there before I did that. So, oh, oh, whoa. Have you ever seen a chip do that? Look at that. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Now, I, you, maybe is that from heating up during my reflow, but oh, oh, wow, I'm literally digging, seriously, I'm like, what, what the heck, it feels as though I'm digging down into that chip, whoa, copper, we have copper, <laughs> oh, come on, cleaned it up again, and... Yeah, look. Yeah, you can see down in there. You can see a bit of a glimmer, can't you? Yep. Yep, I do believe that is the blowhole. That is the blowhole. How this thing um, got this white, like how it actually blew, I don't know. Look, oh, is that side of the chip gone away there as well? But anyway, well, yeah. Anyway, okay, it looks like we might have softened it up from the reflow, maybe, but... Uh, anyway, yeah, it was definitely there before I did the reflow. There was that blow that looks like a blowhole in the um, chip there, and yet yeah, the magic smokes escape. And everyone knows the magic ingredient in every 
component is the magic smoke. Luckily, IBM make a re and they they have a refill can available for the magic smoke that you can actually put and back in there. Unfortunately, that IBM magic smoke rare as hen's teeth these days don't have any here in the lab. Otherwise, I'd be able to refill this thing and uh, we'd be able to resolder it. So yes, that has failed. And uh, some people wanted to see the bottom of the AERL board as well. Um, it is not that. And there you go, pulse magnetics. Um, looks fine. There's no issues there. Um, the ethernet cable's not outside. Somebody asked that. Um, it's just in the roof going from my router in the roof uh, over to the, well, you know, like a space um, to uh, the garage. Yeah, it's, nothing to do with this board it's got the proper magnetics on there so no worries so yeah i don't know how we got a uh, blowhole in that chip and the blowhole obviously like took probably took out um my yeah that is my theory is that yeah the excess current in here just like maybe took out the dc to dc converter and we've got all sorts of problems and then probably like five volts on the output and then it took out every it's probably taken out everything else so yeah that board is completely kamigatsa um but thank you very much joa for uh pointing out that blowhole in the chip <laughs> well done my viewers spot everything